This is 1000 points of necro, and I'm gonna paint all of these using makeup brushes. And I know that this might sound kind of weird, but there is a reason for this. If you remember this little guy which I painted for my dray brushing video, I actually wanted to paint entire army like this. So of course, last time I used these expensive Artis Opus dray brushes, and actually some of you guys told me that I can use cheap makeup brushes instead. And today we are gonna test this hypothesis. And just so you guys know what we are dealing with here, this Artis Opus set costs like 80 bucks. What I am using instead are these really cheap makeup brushes which cost like ten dollars per pack these are also suitable for vegans which i'm not and these offer quite a nice range of sizes so maybe you want to use these for vehicles and these ones for characters and just in case i got this pack as well and i think this one was for 10 bucks as well so we are gonna test these so i will not use these at all maybe i might use this little dampening pad but that's it Comparing my cheap makeup brushes to expensive Artis Opus dry brushes, so far I cannot really feel any difference. Both are soft, which is ideal for dry brushing. In any case, I will use this textured palette. It's useful because you can easily get rid of excess paint and water in your brush by using this circular motion. For the entire army, I'm gonna use pretty much only dry brushing and a bit of stippling. You don't need too much water for these techniques, so this palette is ideal for this. Although you will waste some paint. First on the menu is base coat. For this job, using large makeup brushes is ideal, since you won't waste too much time. Even here I am not adding any water, because that way you get better coverage faster. There is a chance that you create some texture here and there, because you might be hitting the same spot multiple times, but since I am aiming for this sort of weathered and old look, it doesn't really matter. Now the base coat on these guys is a little bit dark, but now we are ready to build some volume. And by that, I mean painting some reflections. To help us understand this better, simply look at these two space marines. One is painted with volumetric highlights and the other is flat and only edges are highlighted. This is really important because I am painting these necrons in non-metallic metal, but using regular metallics is also a viable option. In this case, I will simply use my base coat color and add ivory in multiple ratios. You could use pure white instead of ivory, but I like a slight tint of yellow. I have used this dampening pad to keep my brush a little bit damp and using circular motion I got rid of most of the paint. This layer is still quite dark and you'll be covering most of your model. Since I am aiming for necrons that are from metal but are very old, using dry brushing and stippling for the most part works. Right here you can see that I didn't get rid of enough water from my brush and therefore some brush strokes are visible. This is not an issue with your initial layers but as we progress to make our reflections lighter and lighter you really need to get most of it out. And now now it's time to make it shiny! To do that, we will now focus on the exposed parts instead of the entirety of these miniatures. I have already talked about how to find which parts are exposed and which are not in my previous videos, but for now, keep in mind that when the mini is still dark, you can sort of tell where the light is reflected, like on this photo right here. Of course, I am not taking photo of every miniature in my army, that would be f***ing insane. Instead, I try to tell which parts are exposed as I paint. For example, on this Necron, you can see that this part of his leg catches more more light than the space underneath. Therefore, it will be lighter. On these claws, this is not as obvious, but I paint lighter layers on top and keep it darker at the bottom. That way there is a nice contrast and your eyes can tell how the reflection is placed. As I continue, I add more and more ivory and really focus on center of those reflections. The most prominent reflections and edges should be highlighted the most. While I am using a little more paint for those flat parts where the reflection is supposed to be, for edges you wanna use almost no paint at all. This applies especially the lighter you go. When you get rid of almost all of the paint, you have to push the bristles hard against your mini, so some pigment is released and most of it will be left on edges. So remember, use more paint and stippling motion for those flat parts where the reflections are supposed to be and less paint and more of a dry brushing motion for edges. Like this, you can actually stipple on some very nice volume and make the surface shiny. Certainly this is not your usual super glossy and reflective non-metallic metal, but by having really dark and really light spots on our mini, you can sort of see it as old and weathered non-metallic metal. On my 
little Necron warriors. I am not as precise since after all there is like 20 of them. So sure, I do try to paint them to look at least somewhat metallic, but honestly, I don't sweat it. On the other hand, when you are painting armies of any kind, concentrating on your centerpieces and characters will make much bigger impact. And let's face it, it's way more fun. So after I painted all the steel parts using just dark sea blue and ivory, we are gonna paint something more complicated and that is copper. I have base coated 10 of my Necron warriors with Rhinox Hide instead of Dark Sea Blue because it's great base coat for anything that is supposed to be gold, bronze, copper, etc. Our first layer is red leather and I am covering most of the mini with the exception of a weapon, of course. All the weapons in my army are steel, so it makes a nice uniting element. Going further, another layer is sunny skin tone. I am once again focused on the edges and center of the reflections. Unfortunately, the smallest brush that I was using is this one. And looking back, I really think that even smaller brush would make my life easier. Even though I am able to pick out some of the most important parts, using smaller brush and stippling motion is straight out better to paint reflections. Last paint to finish our copper slash bronze slash brass parts is once again ivory. At this point I am using it very sparingly, just for the most exposed edges and for the most prominent reflections. Similar process is used for gold parts as well. However, with the exception of Rhinox Hide, all the paints are different. For NMM Gold, this is the recipe that you wanna go for. It's also a very similar recipe that I used for this miniature, so I think that it works. First, I layered British Khaki. Then I stippled Japanese Brown. I continue with Yellow Ochre, and went for final layer, which is stippled pale yellow. Somehow I am not too happy with this gold. Somewhere it looks quite alright, but on those flat parts like these, it's problematic. I think this happens with dry brushing when you have to use more than two paints and you lack control of how much of each tone is present. So for those colored non-metallic metals, it might be better to do it the good old way or to use controlled stippling with a smaller brush. Now I bet you're thinking, but surely you cannot paint any glow effects using dry brushing, right? Right? Well, think again. I start by picking out all the glowy parts with livery green. You can actually get quite far with stippling, since it's your ultimate hobby cheat for pretty much anything. Since we paint another light source, if you hit any surrounding edges, it's actually good, because they are exposed to this new light source. You don't necessarily want to go overboard with it, but some light will definitely hit surrounding parts. Light is also supposed to be very saturated, so I am using fluo paints to make it happen. These paints are semi-transparent and have satin finish, so if you are not used to using them, tread carefully and use just a little bit to cover entirety of the light source and surrounding space. Now even though this result is quite nice, we will go a step further and apply a bit of ivory just on a tiny spot on your light source. Once again, you can see that smaller brushes would be really handy right now, but I am using just a few bristles of this brush and somehow it worked out. This layer of ivory is a nice foundation for yellow fluo paint. As you can see, just a few stipples on top of it is enough to make it really bright and saturated. This way, you get a really nice light source. At this point, almost everything is painted except for the blades and bases. Both of these are gonna be purple and magenta, so I won't be wasting time by switching paints. Starting with the blades, basically every single Necron warrior has one mounted on their weapons. If you do have small makeup brushes, now is the time to use them. Unfortunately, I totally forgot that I bought this pack of small makeup brushes for like $5, but what can you do? Either way, the principle here is very simple and similar to non-metallic metal. I start by using Nagaroth Knight purple and on top of that I layer magenta. When you are painting reflections on blades, a good rule of thumb is to never paint reflections right next to each other on different sides of your blade. So that essentially means that you are painting this sort of check pattern. So while one side has a reflection, the other is dark. However, this rule has many exceptions, especially if you paint anything other than a blade. Even though I'm struggling quite a bit with all the edges, I still try to highlight those as well. At this point, bristles on this brush are fairly frayed, but I am able to apply at least a little bit of paint where I need to. Furthermore, I try to deepen my shades by using Nagaroth Knight again. With the brushes that I was using, painting these larger blades was much more pleasant experience, since I could stipple the entire gradient quite easily. With the same purple, I covered entirety of all bases while avoiding already painted Parts. Then, it was all about 
the dry brushing pure magenta again. You can notice that some bases have scrap parts on them, for which I mostly used my NMM copper recipe, the same recipe that was used for 10 of my Necron Warriors. As I was covering trims of all bases, I used way more water, since you wanna make it nice and smooth, so more than one layer might be necessary. To create some visual diversity, I also glued on these warm colored fantasy tufts. As you can see, dry brushing entire army with only makeup brushes absolutely works. It's fast, it's pleasant, especially if you get smaller brushes, and it's also easy. Does it look good though? Well, I think this really suits armies like Necrons, where there is a lot of metallic parts, but I wouldn't necessarily use it for Tyranids, for example. You could also see me use a lot of stippling, which is fast as well and you have much more control. I think that stippling is the ultimate hobby cheat and can be used for pretty much anything. And for example, this entire Space Marine was painted with it. So, if you want to learn about alternative to dry brushing, which gets you way, way better results, there is a video for you, right here, and see you there!